Today we're going to be looking at four different approaches that you can use when you're coming up with your hi-hat patterns for your beats. Alright, so I think a good way to format this video is to think about your hi-hat patterns by which subgenre they belong to. And from there you'll be able to use the tools and the ideas from each of the subgenres no matter what you're making. Starting off, let's take a look at trap hi-hats. First off, I always recommend using the piano roll instead of the step sequencer here, just because inside of the piano roll in FL Studio, there are a ton of tools and tricks that you can use to come up with better hi-hat patterns, which I'll show you guys. Starting off, if you're in double time, the base framework for a trap hi-hat pattern is to fill out every other square. And to make this process a little bit quicker, if you just hold down control and highlight the section that you've already made, and then hit control B, you can quickly duplicate your pattern out. To create some variation, you can fill in the squares in between as well, albeit less frequently. It's best to pick and choose. As well, playing around with the velocity of these in-between notes to create ghost notes can also add a sort of new feel to your rhythm. That's something that you might want to play with as well. And compared to some of the other hi-hat patterns that we're going to look at today, the volume or the velocity of these initial notes that we laid down, the sort of framework that we built, those are going to remain relatively consistent. By all means, I'm not saying you can't play with them, but the idea of trap drums is that they sort of have a computerized feel to them. And so having a consistent velocity for our notes is going to help us play into that aesthetic. Whereas if I had a more varied pattern here in terms of my velocity... <laughs> It's going to sound a little bit more human and a little bit more natural, which might not be what you want for a trap beat. Now, one of the tools in FL Studio's piano roll that's really useful for trap hi-hat patterns is the chopper. This will help you create rolls pretty easily. So what you want to do is select the hi-hat that you want, and then on your keyboard, hit Alt and U, or you can just go in the tools up here and select chop. And based on how intense you want your roll to be, you can just turn this dial here easily, and there you go. As well, another really useful shortcut is hitting Ctrl and L. This will quickly extend your note to reach the next one here. So if you want an extended roll, you just quickly hit Ctrl and L and then Alt and U. Now I want to show you guys a pretty cool trick here. What you want to do is select your entire roll that you've created and then make sure all the velocities are different here and then hit Alt and A. This brings up the arpeggiator. From here, you can start playing around with the time multiplier knob as well as the pattern. You can come up with some pretty cool rhythms that you might not have thought of yourself. By the way, you might want to make sure that the range is set to 1 when you do this, just so your hi-hat pattern doesn't go all over the place. Some of these patterns are pretty wacky, so you might want to look out for that as well, but nonetheless, it's a pretty useful tool. And again, this trick won't work if all the notes have the same velocity, so make sure to change those before you do this. Another staple of trap hi-hats are dramatic shifts in your pitch. So I can take some of these hi-hat notes and be a little bit more subtle with my pitch changes here, or I can also be pretty dramatic and change some of the other notes a little bit more drastically. <laughs> If you start to get the feeling that you've been a little bit too drastic with your hi-hat pattern, it's a little bit too all over the place, one of the tools that you can use is to limit your keys. So what you're going to do is hit Alt and K to open up the note limiter. This will bring up this little piano roll here, and you guys can see some of the keys are a little darkened out and some of them are a little bit brighter. The keys that are bright, this basically shows us the range that our keys all fall into with the pattern that we're working on. So what I can do is just drag this over and you guys can see what happens. The notes automatically get bumped up to the nearest matching note within the field that we choose here. So this might be useful if you feel like your pattern's a little bit too extreme in its pitch and you want to quickly test out how it would sound if it's a little bit less drastic. Adding syncopation to your pattern is also very helpful when you're coming up with your trap hi-hats. Syncopation basically just means to alter the rhythm of your pattern for a brief little moment. So to do this, what you do is click the magnet up here to change your grid lines for your pattern. So since the triplet flow is very common in trap, what you do is change this to one third beat. Now this will bring up a new set of grid lines and I can easily just go in at the end of the pattern here, fill in these three squares. And now we have some syncopation in our pattern. <laughs> You guys can hear the rhythm slightly changed at the end there. As well, another really helpful tool is adding randomization to panning. As of right now, my hi-hats are pretty smack dab in the middle, they're very mono. So to help them sound a little bit more wide in the stereo mix, what you can do is hit Alt and R to bring up the randomizer and make sure pattern is turned off, otherwise your hi-hat pattern will just go all over the place, which is not what you want. What we're trying to do is change the levels instead. As well, make sure bipolar is selected to make sure your panning goes both ways instead of just one way. 
And then you can just turn the pan knob up and you guys can see, we're gonna have some variation in our panning now. And if you guys don't like the pattern that I came up with, you can just cycle through these different seeds. And I'll just keep randomizing to new patterns here. So those are some tips that you can use if you're trying to come up with a hi-hat pattern for your trap beats. Some of the other things that you wanna make sure to keep in mind though, compared to the other hi-hat patterns that we're gonna look at today, trap has more of a quantized feel to it. So typically you're not gonna be as sloppy with your placement in terms of where the notes fall on the grid. It's gonna be pretty flush for the most part. As well, when it comes to how often or how extreme you want to use these tools, like having rolls or playing with the pitch of your notes, a good place to start is to think about what your other components in the beat are doing. If you have a very complex melody that has a very dense kick pattern and there's lots of snare rolls, you might wanna be a little bit more basic with your hi-hat pattern. Whereas if you have a pretty minimal beat and the kick and the snare aren't doing anything too complicated at that point, that sort of opens up the possibilities for your hi-hat pattern to be a little bit more audacious with these types of techniques that I showed you guys. As for the open hi-hat, there's really not much to say about this really. Placing your open hi-hat right before your snare is pretty common practice as well as at the very end of your loop. As well, playing around with the pitch of the open hi-hat to closer resemble what the closed hi-hat sounds like is often a good idea as well. There's no absolute wrong way to place your open hi-hat, but I will say placing it at an off interval might not sound all that great. So you might wanna think about placing your open hi-hat on the same grid interval as our base foundation of the closed hi-hat that we came up with initially, which again was every single other square here. As well, going into the sample and making sure you turn on the envelope and have it be something closer to a perfect square is often a good idea. Just because if we had this off, you guys can hear. The open hi-hat's a little bit too long and extends out a little bit too much. So controlling the volume of your open hi-hat when it opens and when it closes is probably something that you might wanna do. Next up, let's take a look at drill hi-hats. Really all the tools and the tricks that I just showed you guys with the trap hi-hats are really applicable to drill hi-hats as well. The big difference though is the base foundation that we initially came up with. An easy way to remember how drill hi-hat patterns are formed is three, three, two. So what you're gonna do is place your first hi-hat down and then count three. So that's one, two, three and then another three, one, two, three, and then two, one, two. And then this is gonna repeat over and over again. Now if I selected all these additional notes that I included and I hit Alt and M, that mutes the notes so you guys can hear how the bass framework of drill sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute all these notes by hitting Shift, Alt, and M. And another big staple of drill hi-hat patterns is the use of ghost notes like I showed you guys earlier. These seem to be a little bit more prevalent in drill patterns, so what I'm gonna do is place a little bit more of them. But nonetheless, a lot of the same ideas that work with trap patterns also work with drill patterns with the rolls as well as the syncopated notes here and the pitch shifting as well. Next up, let's take a look at boom bap hi-hats, which is an entirely different style, which has its own set of tips and tricks I'm gonna show you guys. So I brought my BPM down to 90. Let's take a listen to how this sounds without any hi-hats in it. Compared to drill or trap hi-hats, these are gonna be very different. First off, it's gonna be very important to have a little bit more of a live natural feel to these hi-hats, unlike the previous hi-hats that we looked at. So playing your hi-hats by hand is a good idea, but if you don't have a mini keyboard, if you just hold down Alt when you lay down your notes, you guys can see it goes off grid. It's gonna place your hi-hat notes down, but they're gonna be unquantized. And you guys can see what I did with this pattern. I wanted to make sure that it's not gonna be flush with the grid. It drags a little bit late. And being late with your hi-hats isn't necessarily the only way you can achieve the live natural feel, but nonetheless, it's a good start. And also you're gonna fill in every other note just like our other pattern here. And if you wanna quickly nudge a note, if you just hover your mouse over top of it, hold down shift and play with the mouse wheel, you can move this note around left to right pretty quickly. Or again, you can hold down alt and just drag it around. As well, compared to our trap hi-hats or our drill hi-hats, it's gonna be a lot more important to play around with the velocity of our hi-hat notes here. So I'm gonna create a sort of up and down pattern here. In terms of using ghost notes in this subgenre, I find it especially helpful to create a live feel as well. But what's different here is if we're even more extreme with how unquantized or off-grid these ghost notes are, it's gonna have a nice feel to it. Whereas again, if everything was perfectly on grid, if I took my entire pattern and I quantized it by hitting Control and Q, it 
just feels a little bit too stiff and robotic just for my taste, which doesn't lend itself to the boom bap aesthetic that I'm pursuing. For me, something that I like to do whenever I have a kick pattern that also has ghost notes in it, I like to copy and paste those over to the hi-hats to make sure I have a hi-hat playing whenever I have a ghost kick as well. So if I hold down control shift and I drag my mouse over each of these notes, I can quickly select them, hit control C to copy them, control V to paste. Now I'm gonna get rid of the other ghost hats that I had here in the same position. I'll play these at the exact same note and play around with the velocity of these by dragging my mouse. So that's the technique I find helpful and vice versa works as well if I put down my ghost hi-hats first. I'll just copy and paste those to my ghost kicks if I want a ghost kick at that point also. Now if you find the pattern that you came up with is just a little bit too sloppy for your liking, if you hit Alt and Q, you can bring up the quantizer in the piano roll. So what you're gonna wanna do is play around with the start time here. If you set it all the way to the left, everything is gonna be perfectly unquantized just like how your pattern started. And as soon as you start turning the dial up, things are gonna become more and more quantized. So you can just hit space and play this one by ear, whatever sounds good to you. So this can be useful if you find that your hi-hat pattern is a little bit too wonky. I did a full video on quantization and when you should be using it, so check that out if you're interested. In terms of the pitch of our hi-hat pattern, you guys will remember with the trap pattern, we had notes all over the place, whereas with a boom bap pattern, that doesn't really work as well. This doesn't necessarily fit the aesthetic of a boom bap pattern, so you might want to be a little bit less drastic with your pitching. So if you did want to include a little bit of pitch variation, again, if you hit Alt and R, and you bring up the randomizer, if you play around with the pitch dial here, that might be a little bit better. And here you might want to turn off bipolar in this instance, just because it might be a little bit too extreme. You guys can hear I have this dial set to just 5% and it sounds all right right now, but as soon as I crank it up to let's say 20%, again, that might be a little bit too wonky and out there just for this aesthetic. So keeping your pitch randomization to a single digit and even a low single digit is a good idea. As well, you can play around with a velocity randomizer here as well, but I'd recommend being a little bit more deliberate with the velocity of your hi-hat notes. And typically I wouldn't touch the panning randomization in this instance just because in boom bap hi-hat patterns, it just doesn't really call for panning variation in my experience as a listener and a creator. Another useful tool that is in FL Studio's piano roll is scale leveling. If you hit Alt and X, by using the center or the offset faders, you can change the velocity of all your notes simultaneously in the same direction. Or by using the tension or the multiplied faders here, you can sort of compress the field of your velocity here, just to make the differences between the notes a little bit less extreme or more extreme. Now one really useful important trick when you're coming up with this style of hi-hat pattern is to clone your sound and make small little variations to it. For instance, if I go to my hi-hat here and I hit Alt and C to clone it, if I do something small like change the start time for example, There's a slight tonality change here. So now I've created an alternate hi-hat here that's close enough to work with my original hi-hat, but different enough to help me create some variation and have a little bit more of a live feel to my pattern. At this point, I can just go into my hi-hat pattern and just select random notes here. Or if I just hit Shift and M, that's gonna select notes at random. And then I just cut these notes by hitting Control X, go into my new hi-hat here, hit Control V to paste. <laughs> And I can do this again to create a third clone for even more variation if I wanted to. As well, another really helpful tool is to make sure you have envelope control here. I can easily use this function to help create some variation as well. For example, if I created another copy here, but I took the envelope and I slightly played around with the release time just so it's a little bit shorter or longer, or I decreased the hold, for example, if I have a shorter MIDI note. Again, small little details like this will help create some variation and a little bit more of a live feel. And another really important thing is sound selection. A lot of the times I see producers do the right things, have the right technique, but the sounds that they choose don't really lend themselves to this aesthetic and the hi-hat pattern just doesn't work with the beat. For example, if I replace all my hi-hats with trap hi-hats, you guys can hear how this sounds. It doesn't quite work as well as the acoustic type of hi-hat that we first chose. Sometimes the texture that you choose is just as important as the pattern that you come up with, so that's always something that you want to keep in mind. And lastly, we're going to take a look at lo-fi hi-hat patterns, in particular a sort of minimal type of lo-fi. Aesthetically, what you're probably going to want to do is choose a hi-hat that's pretty similar to the boom bap one that we selected. But the difference here is obviously since we're making a lo-fi beat, it's not gonna be as bright or polished. So again, we're gonna start this off by filling in every other note here, but we're gonna play them at a far lower pitch. 
to again help them sound a little bit more dark and gritty. And since we don't want these to be in the forefront of the beat, again, this is a little bit more of a minimal lo-fi. We're gonna turn the velocity way down here. As well, it's important to use the envelope function with your hi-hats for a lo-fi beat, just because we can really control how minimal we want this hi-hat to sound in the beat by changing the length of the note. So the shorter the note is, the more minimal it sounds in the beat. Nudging your notes off grid is also a good idea. So if I went to the grid here, chose none, and I held down shift and hit right, I can slightly nudge my notes now. So even though I showed you guys the rules and the standards of each and every single one of these hi-hat pattern styles, I would say that experimenting and blending in between each of these subgenres can really produce a cool sound to your beat. Using the chopper tool on your boom bap hi-hat pattern might sound good, or unquantizing your trap hi-hat pattern might have a good result as well. I just want to show you guys these starting points, the rules if you want to call them that, but again, rules are meant to be broken. If you guys have found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below which of these hi-hat patterns gives you the most trouble. As always, my free drum kit is available available in the description box below. Join the Discord if you're interested in having your beats reviewed live and I will see you guys next time.